what I'll really focus on in my presentation is how do some of these ideas around the opportunities for open data in the agriculture sector or the SDGs broadly translate to the local level in terms of implementation in particularly the, the, the communities that we're trying to impact um, in the developing world across, across the globe. And I'll be telling that story a bit from the Jamaican or the Caribbean perspective. So I won't recap this. I mean, we've already spoken, uh, Dr. Oteki already spoke about the importance of increasing the amount of food that we produce over the next, uh, over the next 30 years. Um, and, and the idea of food security has already been identified as part of one of the SDGs as critical to development moving forward. Um, and I think the case of data and agriculture has already been made, uh, particularly around open data and agriculture. But I think one of the key questions that we have to ask is, well, what is, you know, how does this translate? Because it's not the, it's the, the process by which an organization opens up data and um, doesn't necessarily mean that organization is going to become data driven in and of their self. And certainly opening up information does not mean that it's going to be accessed by those communities that are most um, disadvantaged. Um, and that's particularly important in a Jamaican context where the average age for the farming population is actually about 60 years old. Um, and you know, literacy is a, a big issue, much less digital literacy, which is a whole, a whole nother, another game. Um, and more importantly, you know, how do you create this type of data-driven sector in an environment of agriculture, which is predominantly a rural um, and resource-constrained environment? And so you have all of these different pieces that pose a challenge for the idea of data usage and information at a sectoral or a economic level for the farming populations. And so we've been working with the agencies in Jamaica to, to think about some of those problems. Um, and this is kind of what it really looks like in, in context. So in Jamaica, agriculture actually employs about 19% of the population and contributes about 9% of GDP. Um, and, but the and that translates to about 200,000 registered farmers in the, in, in, the, in the country. But for all of the agencies that are responsible that for providing underground extension support to those farming population, to that farming population, there are about 140 extension officers. No, that doesn't scale. Right, and unfortunately, I mean, if you've read anything about uh, Jamaica and our current dance with the IMF and kind of the development community, uh, our government is not going to have a lot of money to ex expand the number of persons that are employed in the agricultural sector. And so, you know, one extension officer to about 1,500 farmers does not allow them to, one, effectively serve those communities and to reach those farmers. But similarly, within the context of this problem, getting information about what's happening in the sector. And so that leads to some significant challenges in terms of data gaps uh, and, structural, and structural challenges um, in, in, in the Jamaican context. And so what we've said to them is, well, how do we think differently about those problems? And how do we think differently about the services that we provide to that community in a way that is, can better scale? And so what we've, the approach that we've been taking is looking at this a sectoral level data partnership because there are a number of different stakeholders and service providers that touch the agricultural community or different, any different problems around the agricultural community. But none of them individually have the sufficient scale to capture all of the information that is going to be needed to have an effective, in, informed way of um, serving the community. And what that data partnership that we're currently working to craft looks like is that Persons who are operating in the sector are both consuming shared information resources as well as contributing back to that data commons in a way that it helps us to better achieve that scale. So at the base, we've been working around um, defining some shared data infrastructure. We've been working with the agency there that does a lot of data collection um, to effectively build a open APIs and standards for um, creating a data commons around production of information around kind of core farming assets, and obviously respecting the privacy of the, the farming community as well. Um, 
On top of that, because there's no broad um, open government program yet in Jamaica, um, we're working at a kind of a sectoral level around bilateral relations between the government agencies to, to facilitate that data sharing. Because right now there's this duplication across um, different, different sectors. So we're working at that, that, those partnership levels so, so that agencies are more comfortable sharing information with each other and putting that within this kind of um, data commons. And on top of that kind of base infrastructure, what we're saying is, all right, well, any new service that is being created for the farming community, whether it is connecting farmers to markets or providing information services to farmers, those services need to be built with these data constraints in mind. And what that means is that one, they're, they're, they're taking information from that data commons, but then there's agreement to contribute back information. In a way, every interaction with a farmer becomes an opportunity to update information about that farmer, and that should be shared back to, to, to the commons um, in a way that also allows other agencies to better serve that community. And beyond that, working to reach out, reach out to persons in the, the private sector and kind of establish external stakeholders to say, all right, well, this is the work that we're doing around this data partnership. Um, would you be interested in contributing information as well as a way of engaging persons, not just within government, but outside of government? And then lastly, kind of in that, the, the spirit of open innovation, um, trying to catalyze new persons to enter into the agricultural space uh, to create services for the farming community um, by opening it up to other persons. So um, thank you very much.